Hi there, this is Dr. Tingting Zhang. I'm a classical pianist and piano educator. Welcome to my channel. Recently, I made a video on how to practice sight reading. I explained and demonstrated a standard procedure. Check out the link below if you haven't watched it. That video is a basic guide on practicing sight reading. There are more things I want to talk about. So in today's video, let's take one step further. I want to share six principles that can help improve your sight reading skills. Later in the video, I also have suggestions for advanced level pianists who want to take their sight reading to the next level. Improving sight reading skills essentially is to develop good reading habits. In my years of teaching, I noticed there are some common mistakes that students make all the time. If you're self-taught, you're probably not aware of them. This is why I will start with two most common mistakes. These are the things we should try to avoid during sight reading. If you found yourself doing them in the past, it's time to break that habit. Number one, never go back to fix wrong notes or wrong rhythm during sight reading. You must learn to ignore your mistakes and keep going to finish the piece. This is a fundamental difference between sight reading and practicing. When you practice a piece, you need to repeat the same place over and over in order to play it smoothly or fix any problems you might have. In other words, to perfect it. Sight reading, however, is not about playing the piece perfectly. It's about getting a general idea of the piece on your first try. And during that process, try to be as accurate as you can, but you will have flaws here and there. The most important thing is to keep the flow of the music. Do not pause or stop in the middle. Playing a few wrong notes is no big deal, but if you constantly stop, go back, or repeat the same measure instead of moving forward, then it becomes a big problem. So let's resist the tendency to go back and accept our imperfections in sight reading. Number two, try not to look down at your hands during sight reading. Instead, keep your eyes on the music. The reason is simple. It helps to maintain the momentum of your playing. When you look up and down between the music and the keyboard, the shift of your tension will distract you or even interrupt your playing, and it's very easy to lose your place in both. So let me show you the right way to sight read. Here I have a Clementi Sonatina. This is the one in C major, opus 36, number three. By the way, this is an intermediate level piece. I'm going to go slowly because that's how you do for sight reading. occasionally when there's a hand position change. And I would say 80% of the time, your eyes should remain on music. I understand this can be challenging for some of you because you have to be familiar with the keyboard to feel secure enough not to look down at your fingers while playing, right? It definitely takes time to build that security and confidence, but it's the right thing to do. In most beginning to early intermediate level pieces, the notes are very close to one another, mostly moving in steps and skips. So you don't need to look down at the keyboard to find every single note. For intermediate to advanced level pianists, since you have been playing piano for quite some time, your fingers know the keyboard. So trust your fingers and let them do the job. The only time they need your visual guidance is when there's a big leap or a transition. For instance, in this piece, between measure four and five, the right hand moves down slightly. So you want to look at the keys and make sure it goes to the right place. And here. 
and then the other place is between measure eight and nine. See, the right hand moves down a lot, almost an octave. You definitely need to look down at the keys. But then after that, your eyes just go back to uh, the page. And then finally, there's another place. See, here we have a big transition. This is the cadence of C major, and then we're going to G major. So you definitely want to look down and make sure your hands are going to the right place. Now, let's move on to the right things. Number one, always look ahead when you play. This is the most important principle of sight reading. Let me explain how it works. When you play the first measure, ideally, your eyes should be looking at the next measure. So you're reading one measure ahead, or at least a half a measure ahead of what you're playing. This is what professional pianists do when they sight read. And why is that? If your eyes don't move fast enough, when you get to the end of a measure, you will inevitably stop on the bar line because you don't know what to play next. You haven't looked yet. So your eyes must move at a faster speed than your fingers to avoid pausing or stopping after every measure. I know this is not easy, especially for less experienced pianists. Sometimes when they look ahead, they mess up the current measure they're playing. This problem is very common. One is because they don't know the notes well enough, so they move very slowly from note to note. The other is that you have to understand sight reading is a complicated task. It requires a high level of coordination between our brain, eyes, and hands. It takes time and lots of practice to train different parts of our body to work together. It's easier for kids than adults. So if you learn piano as an adult, please be patient. It will take you some time to get used to looking ahead while playing. The solution to this problem is to always play slowly for sight reading so that you give yourself plenty of time to play and look at the same time. Gradually, this will become a habit. Your eyes will automatically look for coming notes for you. Number two, try to read the notes in groups instead of one by one. It will be even better if you can scan the entire measure all at once. This goes hand in hand with the principle I just discussed. Because you can read the notes faster, you will be able to look ahead more easily. Over the years of my teaching, I have an interesting observation. I found students who are very good at sight reading are also fast and efficient readers in real life. That's because music reading and text reading have many similarities. An efficient reader doesn't read word by word. He sees the whole sentence. He might even skip a few words, but can still comprehend the text well because he kind of predicts what is coming. This is exactly the scale we need in music reading. Let me give you an example. Let's look at another sonatina by Clementi. This one is in G major, opus 36, number two. By the way, these are great teaching pieces for intermediate level students. At the beginning, I'm looking at four notes at a time. And I recognize the first measure is just G major broken chord. Then when we get to measure five, this is just the second inversion of G major. And then I see there are some scales coming. Okay, just by scanning this measure, I see the left hand has the D major scale. So I'm not going to read every single note. This is just D major broken chord. After that, it's just a repeat. Slightly different. You see, of course, this comes with experience, but you can train yourself to do the same. Through years of learning and playing, you're developing the ability to recognize the patterns, the phrase structures, uh, the chord progressions, etc.
All this knowledge and experience will help you comprehend and anticipate what is coming in the music. So when you practice sight reading, be more aware of these things and really try to read the notes in groups. Even if you're still a beginner, you should try to look at three or four notes at a time instead of each individual note. That's how you start building a good habit. Number three, know your music theory. It's not so obvious that theory would affect your sight reading proficiency, but it really does. For instance, when you sight read a piece with multiple sharps or flats, it can be difficult to remember to play all of them if you're not familiar with the key signatures or scales. Also, in my last video, I talked about finding patterns and doing a little analysis before sight reading a piece. Without any knowledge of music theory, it would be impossible to recognize the tonic chord, dominant sevenths, or cadence. This is why I strongly recommend learning some basic theory, as well as practicing the major and minor scales, arpeggios, triads, seventh chords, and inversions on a regular basis. Not only do they develop your technique, but also improve your sight reading. Another principle is when learning a new piece, try to play hands together the very first time. The only exception is when learning Bach. Because it's polyphonic, there are multiple voices, it's always better to play hands separately at first. But for all other pieces, you should try both hands. I know some students would like to start with one hand at a time. That's a good strategy for practicing, but not so good for sight reading. We pianists need to train ourselves to read two steps at the same time. Even if you feel it's difficult and it takes a long time to finish reading the piece, you need to step out of your comfort zone and push yourself in the right direction. I always tell my students, if your reading is slow, don't sight read the whole piece, break it down, do a small part at a time. For example, you can start with four measures or eight measures, then expand it to 16 measures. Do it incrementally. Sight reading takes a lot of brain power and your mind will get tired after a while. So limit your reading to 10 or 15 minutes at a time, depending on your level and attention span. Stay focused and keep yourself engaged are the way to go. All right, before I move on to the suggestions for advanced level pianists, I just wanna say it takes time to get better at sight reading. Some people are naturally faster, some need to put in more effort. Keep in mind, when you practice sight reading, two things really matter. One is quantity, the other is consistency. Quantity means you need to sight read a good number of pieces before seeing any improvement. By the way, don't sight read the same piece more than three times. Newness is the key. You want to play it, leave it, then move on to something else. Consistency obviously means you need to keep doing it. Sight read regularly, say two to three times a week, and keep up the routine for three to six months. I guarantee you will see the progress. Another thing to consider is to pick something easier than your actual level. Because the goal of sight reading practice is to develop good habits, you want to implement all the things we discussed earlier. When a piece is too difficult, you are simply overwhelmed. Most likely, you will be making many mistakes and you won't be able to look ahead or read the notes in groups. So, for less experienced pianists, you actually will be making more progress by sight reading easier pieces. Finally, for advanced pianists and college piano major students, if you want to take your sight reading skills to the next level, I recommend you collaborate with other instrumentalists and singers as often as possible. One thing I noticed when I was in music school is that students who played a lot of accompaniments are all excellent at sight reading. That's because they constantly practice sight reading, and many piano accompaniments uh, or orchestra reductions are very tricky sometimes are even harder than solo pieces. So if you want to continue getting better at sight reading, you should do the same. 
I always encourage my advanced students to play chamber music with their schoolmates or accompany for their school musicals. You will grow so much from these experiences. Plus, it's always fun to collaborate with other musicians. Another thing that will help is to learn more contemporary pieces, such as those of Ligeti, Carter, Carigliano, and so on. Many of the 20th century pieces are atonal and have complicated rhythms. They are very challenging to learn. However, if you get yourself some exposures in these repertoires, you will expand your horizon and push your sight reading skills to a whole new level. Then, when you come back to the more traditional repertoire, you will feel it's a piece of cake. Thank you for watching. Try these ideas and let me know how they work for you. Meanwhile, if you still have any questions regarding sight reading or piano playing in general, feel free to comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.